Seriously guys, this is the episode that made my face look like this the whole time I was watching it. It's been a long time since I have seen an episode with this much action, secrets, surprises, flashbacks and an epic fight between Ichu and Yoba. God, everything about this episode was amazing, everything from the start to finish. The star of this episode is truly Yoba. The new additions made his character even deeper and also they made me feel a little bit scared of this character Ryu, who was finally confirmed to be named Adonis. I always said this part would be full of additions that would change the course of many events and that's exactly what happened. The additions made the manga events seem like nothing compared to what the anime did. So guys, let's talk about the most important secrets revealed in this episode. <laughs> The third part raised the level of additions. There is a huge difference between the additions of part 1 and 2. And this part, seriously, they did an amazing job in changing the fight between Ichigo and Yorbach and the death of Ryo into something completely different and amazing. Because in the past, I truly wanted to see a flashback of Ryo and Yorbach when we see these uh, scenes in the anime. I know that Kobo wouldn't give us a full flashback about the relationship between Yoaba and Ryu, but at least some new information and questions about these two characters. And that's exactly what happened. The episode starts with a short flashback showing young Yoaba inside the Watchers where Ryu is also present. And we need to stop here guys. One of the questions that I wanted to know was Yoabach in the same order as Ryu before the new worlds were formed, or did he come after that? Because three years ago, I even wrote a fanfiction about Yoabach and Ryu, where I imagined he lived in that world with Ryu, before he wanted to split the worlds. I'm speaking about Soul King. It seems like part of what I did in the past uh, happened. Young Yoabach appears in the sea, seeing Ryu standing there holding a sword, and honestly, this episode made me see Yoabach, as I said, as a character with emotions, a human side, a vision, and a desire. He's not just driven by destruction, something happened in the past that made him the Yoabach we know today. And lucky us, we now have some clues about his motives. On the other hand, as I said in the beginning of this video, I started to feel scared of Ryu, especially after I watched this scene creepy scene of him. The scariest part is that Kobo hasn't shown us any clear expressions from Ryu yet. In the present, he's inside a crystal and in the past, he appears from a distance without speaking or moving. All we have is Yuabak's perspective of his father. And the confusing part of that flashback is how Yuabak grows older in each scene, until the moment when Ryu starts dividing the worlds. And then Yoabach returns to his younger self. The last thing Yoabach remembers of Ryu is him holding that sword. Which might explain why Yoabach says in flashback episode 24, so this is a soul king, especially the scene with Ichibi holding him. Then we learn that Ryu's real name was Adonis. Many thought that this would be uh, Ryu's name, because Yoabach mentioned it in episode 25, when he was about to perform the Auswell. Yoabach said the coffin of Adonis, and Yoabach also called him by that name in this episode. Anyway guys, I don't want to go deeper into this flashback since there are still mysterious things that I want to talk about uh, in other videos, especially the part where Yoabach is in the same world uh, as Ryo, in that sea, where the worlds emerged from, and how Yoabach later appeared in the human world. And so the flashback ends with this amazing scene of Yoabach and Ichigo. And Kobo confirms something I have been saying for a long time. Yu Habach couldn't kill Ryu and was waiting for someone like Ichigo. Yu Habach stopped Ryu, but the worlds didn't fall apart. Yes, there were changes, but Ryu was still maintaining the balance of the worlds. And Yu Habach, as you can see, needed Ichigo with his five powers human, Quincy, Forbring, Shinigami, and Hollow to break the seal placed on Ryu. All Yoabach had to do 
was stimulate Ichigo's Quincy blood so it would activate and cut Ryu. And if you noticed guys, Yoaba kept saying that the Quincy blood inside Ichigo cannot allow Ryu to exist, the ones who abandoned his son, Yoaba. And this was confirmed by Shinji Maro in the previous episode. And all our Kiski also linked what happened to the Quincy's was because they posed a threat to the current system. They are considered a cursed race, with no place in the current Richie system of human souls, Shinigami, and Hollow. So, because a Shinigami can purify a Hollow, but when a Quincy kills a Hollow, it removes it completely from existence, which threatens the balance of the worlds. That's why Yoabach blamed Ryo for watching over the three worlds and doing nothing about the tragedy of the Quincy's. That's why guys this episode made me see uh, both Yoabach and Ryo in a different light. But aside guys from the secrets revealed, what made this episode incredible was the battle between Ichigo and Yoabach. The fight was truly epic, it made what happened in the manga seem like nothing compared to the anime. The additions in this fight clearly showed how much Ichigo has grown his power, and it's impressive how not much time passed since Ichigo first fought Yoaba during the first uh, invasion, and back then Ichigo wasn't aware of his full powers, and the difference in strength between him and Yoaba was huge, but after Ichigo discovered his true Shinigami power, he was able to stand up to Yoaba. Of course, I'm not saying that he is at the same level yet, but I'm comparing the level of Ichigo between the first and the second invasion. We know Yuabach wasn't fighting seriously or using his full powers, but what surprised me was Ichigo's destructive power, especially when using his new Gitsuga Tensho. Just think guys, Yuabach used the same technique to block Ichigo's attack that he used against Himamoto in their fight, and it stopped Himamoto from advancing. But Ichigo's attack destroyed Yuabach's defense, which is one of his strongest techniques, and directly hit him. And Watching this fight guys, it made me a clear uh, vision that the anime will change a lot of upcoming fights and events, especially concerning Ichigo. The anime guys now is going to a completely new path, not in the manga, and doing it in a fantastic way. For example, most of the scenes from Ichigo and Yuabak's fight weren't in the manga. Scenes of the Shinigami reacting and Orohara Kiski talking also weren't in the manga, and more importantly, we got to see Ryokun's reaction after Ryu was stabbed. He had those small pieces of silver in front of the picture of his wife and Yuryu. We also saw Ichin's reaction. And these are signs that their role will be important in the new events. And one thing that said the same guys were the words of Ichibi. That guy is impossible to figure out. He knows human can't stop Yuaba. Yet he asks Ichigo to go to stop him. It's as if he wants things to go like that. And this is what happened. Now oh guys, Ryu is dead, killed by Ichigo, and the worlds are on the brink of collapse. So, who will be the saver? And also guys, one of the things that I wanted to see in this episode was Aizen. But I think this would happen in the next episode. In the end guys, what do you think about these events, the fight of Ichigo and Yuabach, the flashback of Yuabach and Ryu, and the other secrets that was revealed? Tell me guys in the comments, and see you in my next video.